Hi everybody, my name is Hannah and this is Pepper and Pine and today I'm sharing with you the books and resources we use for our Norse mythology main lesson block. I primarily used our live education curriculum for Norse mythology, but of course I added a lot of other books and resources and I'm going to share those with you today. If you did want to try a Waldorf approach and you didn't want to buy the entire curriculum for the year from live education, I would recommend that you pick up this book by Charles Kovacs called Norse Mythology. Charles Kovacs was a Waldorf teacher. He's since passed away, but there are a lot of books that uh, his notes for his classroom, um, for the lessons that he did, they were all compiled into these books. And so if you wanted to try the Waldorf approach, then this would be a really great way that you could do that. Now I have some mixed feelings about some of the content and some of the books, but overall I think it's a really great resource if you're looking to explore a little bit more of a Waldorf approach. So a main lesson block is a, a concentration of a particular subject area for a period of time. So it differs from a unit study where a unit study would be including all different subjects into the lesson, a main lesson block focuses attention just on that content, just on those lessons, while simultaneously having other lessons run parallel that are daily, that are not main lesson blocks. So you'll still have your daily math and maybe something in grammar, but the concentration of your time, the majority of your time, will be spent on the main lesson. So we've included other books and resources that sort of round out our main lesson, but they're not intended to make it exactly like a unit study. So for the Waldorf approach for the ancient civilizations and the mythologies and the history that's, um, you know, from from the dawn of time, I suppose, the stories that are used are ones regarding the belief system, the the uh, spirituality of a particular region or people. So this book is going to have a lot of the stories of the mythology, and that's going to be the primary way to introduce the lesson. There will be other historical information, especially as the children get older. There will be a lot more, uh, maybe what you would imagine a typical history unit to have, but when the children are younger, the history units are heavily story driven. So we have uh, a couple of books. I have a couple of books that can help you develop that kind of approach if you decided to do that. So I have The Children of Odin. This is a book of northern myths and this is going to go over pretty much the same stories that you're going to find in the Charles Kovacs book except for this one's also going to include other uh, uh, I guess other stories or other ways to actually teach the main lesson block. We also have Norse mythology or Norse myths by Dolier, and this one has some really unique, beautiful illustrations. But again, these stories again are going to be the same as the ones you're going to find in the Children of Odin and in Norse mythology. So you don't need all three of these books. You could really just choose one and go through these stories uh, it, uh, together with your children as a read aloud, or you could read these first and then you could deliver your stories orally like you're, you're telling them as if they're your own stories. When we did this unit, because we've done these units so many times over the years, I've got four children, we have used different resources each time, so I wouldn't be using all three of these at one time. So we've read this book, we've read this book, we didn't read it at the same time, and of course we started this book, but we didn't finish it. But that's just a little uh, background on, on how you might use some of these resources. This is a new book for us. We haven't read this one yet, but I wanted to share it with you. It's Norwegian Folk Tales. So this is going to differ from the mythology. These are These are stories, and they're from the general same area, but I don't know if the time period matches up, but they are other folk tale type stories that you could include. And if I were doing this unit with this book this time, I'm actually sharing this at a time when we're not doing this unit, I would read these stories as part of our opening activities because they are fairly short. And this would be a perfect way to introduce the unit, just have something that's brings the children together, something interesting that you can read. You can include this, 
include this story along with like mental math or a game that you could play and that would be a nice way to begin the unit before you get into some of your other stories for the main lesson. So uh, I have one more mythology book. I found this one at the library bookstore and so I went ahead and picked it up. It's Favorite Norse Mythology or myths. And again, you're going to find the same stories. What's going to be a little bit different about each of these books is just the way the author is retelling them and of course the illustrations. You could completely skip all of the illustrations and kind of collect a couple of different stories and, and choose a way that you wanted to uh, to share some of these uh, myths and, and the mythology. But overall, I, I don't really think that there's going to be one book that's superior over the other. I think it's really going to be if you're choosing to do this kind of approach with uh, um, rather, if you're going to use this kind of Waldorf approach with your children, then know that the mythology is going to be an important part of the whole main lesson before you do any of the other history. And if you're doing this unit with really young children, you might be skipping the history entirely until they're older. And if you are maybe not doing this in grade four or year four, you're doing this maybe a little bit later, or your child just really wants to know all of the detailed aspects of the history, then absolutely you can include them as well. I would just say don't forego the mythology and instead just do the history. Okay, when we're doing a main lesson block or unit study, I especially like to have a number of other books that I, I'm i always looking for, especially for a history unit. So generally, I'll look for things like picture books, historical fiction, craft books, cooking books. So this time I have a few, um, maybe probably only just one or two um, picture books and historical fiction. Um, but I did find an interesting one on math, but I don't have any cookbooks and I don't have any craft books. So those are two things that we did not include this time around. Although there are many things that you could do when it comes to cooking or crafting as well. So the first book I want to show you, which is kind of an interesting one, is called a, um, At Sea on a Viking Ship. And what's really neat about this book is that it's all mathematical. So you're going to learn a little bit about boats and a, a Viking ship in particular, but there's going to be a lot of math that you or a little bit of math that you can do with it. And I really like this uh, very organic approach to using math within a history unit or um your math within say a science unit which would be a lot more uh, appropriate like you would see a lot more math like in a science unit but what I appreciate is the very organic way that you're going to see some of these subject areas mixed together because oftentimes we really separate each each of these subject areas so much that we forget that there's there's math in these other areas and there's always grammar and, and language in in history and in, in science, we're seeing all of this overlap, but sometimes we separate it so much that we forget that it's actually there. So a book like this is a really nice way to remind ourselves that we can include these other subject areas in our lessons in a very organic way. This doesn't offer a ton of math, to be honest. However, what I like about it is that it gives you this, this idea that you can include it. So you might just have a couple of examples, but then you can draw on this and change the numbers and have even more examples or you can have your children come up with questions that's always great as well and then I, I like that there are uh, some illustrations and then just some content to just kind of give it a little bit more interest okay so you wouldn't want to be a series is a really fantastic series so this is you wouldn't want to be a viking explorer and the reason why i like these books is that they're kind of silly and whimsical and uh, they're, they're just really enjoyable to read. The, the illustrations, like, sometimes I love them, sometimes I don't. Kind of just really depends. But I like that they're just different and unique, uh, and a really fun way to explore a subject area. My kids have always enjoyed them. They're, you know, somewhat of a page turner, so you're not really getting tired of the info. So it's a mix of, say, a picture book and then something that has a little bit more content, but it's delivered in a really nice way. So I really enjoy these books. And it's it's really kind of, um, I like that it's, a, it's really silly. It's, it's serious stuff, but it's delivered in a, in a more humorous way. So I find that to be really appealing for adults and children. 
Life on a Viking Ship. These kinds of books um, that give a little bit more of the the history, the artifacts, the clothing, the food, things like that. Uh, these you can definitely pick up from the library pretty easily. And you will find, you'll find books like this that appeal to, or that are written at a, say, a third or fourth grade level. Then you'll find it like upper elementary and then you'll find it junior high. And this, I, I, I would put this right around the, like the middle elementary. And so it's going to be pretty easy to read. A lot of these books, we always did them as read alouds. Very, seldomly would I assign these kinds of reading materials to my kids. We will always just sit together and read them together. And so even if my children were younger than their reading level, they could understand it. If they were older, it was enjoyable for them to listen to me read aloud. And sometimes they might read aloud and we would all listen to a, a, one of my other children. But primarily, I would read these books aloud to my children. And we would include these as either part of the actual lesson or sometimes we would include these as part of our opening activities. And we would do a little bit of reading from each of these books for maybe 10 minutes or a few, a few pages from each of these books. And that would just be a nice way to introduce our our lessons this book i only just recently picked up and i picked it up because it had been a while since we had done our norse mythology and our our viking unit and i thought that we didn't have that many resources we actually have a pretty good amount of resources what i'm actually missing are some cookbooks and some craft books but i went ahead and picked this one up it was only three dollars and i do like it because i i like books that are going to offer some beautiful illustrations along with the content however uh this is this sometimes books are not necessarily mm, narratives or page turners or they just, sometimes they're a little bit m more factual and dry and what i see from this book because we haven't read it yet is that this is a kind of book that that's similar in my opinion to a DK, dk eyewitness book and those ones are for more like a uh, middle school and and even older i would say where each two page layout is one topic area it has some content like a couple of paragraphs and then it usually will have like the dk witness books will have like a lot of different pictures or illustrations and then they'll have some captions along with them i personally don't like books that have a lot of captions to read i sort of get lost in them and it's hard for me to figure out if there's a sequence to them. So I, I usually don't prefer those kinds of books. However, this one seems to be a, a lot more gentle <laughs> in that approach. It doesn't seem quite as dense as a DK Eyewitness book, but it is the kind of book that you could probably just open up any two page spread, read that information and then close the book and not have to worry. It's not like set up in chapters. What's good about a book like this is that you could include this in your opening activities. Now your opening activities could be, you know, half your main lesson because you're playing a, maybe a game and you're reading a couple of pages from a book like this and maybe you're reading a folktale and this just all turns into quite a bit of content. So that's one of the benefits of having a book like this where you could just read a couple of pages a day and, and it's an easy stopping point rather than chapter books where it's a little bit more difficult to figure out like where to stop and you kind of get really invested in it. Okay, these books are phenomenal. I really like them. They're If You Were Me and Lived In and they have lots of different topic areas and this is Viking Europe. And what I like about these books, and at first I was a little bit um questioning the illustrations but they've really grown on me and i really like them now at first i was like not really sure about them this actually has a ton of content and if you were only going to have a couple of books for this unit i would definitely recommend this one as one of those few books uh, and also one of the mythology books and then a history some something more factual in the in the history if you wanted more of like the the rulers and the location and the clothing those kinds of things so and and a uh, historical fiction so just four books and you you've got yourself a really good unit unit so what i like about this book is that this takes you back to this time period but it's as if you were a child at this time period or at least the books that i've read they're always in they're always from the perspective of a child and it might be a girl or a boy in some cases maybe there were there were like you know siblings i, I actually can't remember because we have a, a few a, a number of these books and then you're given a name that you might have had back then 
and then what your day might have been like and what your parents might have been doing and what a season would have been like and it, i love it so much because you really feel invested in the story it really brings it down to your perspective you learn a lot from imagining how it would be like for you versus a book that this takes you from like the bottom in like you're right there versus like top down just reading something that's you know people did this and they live that it's like if you were here and this is what you would do and your parents might do this i love 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 that approach this is a really lengthy book it has a lot of content it's really well done it goes through everything that might be going on in you know quote unquote your life if you were a child at that time so if you see them then these are definitely gems to pick up the last book i've got two more things after this but the last book i have to share with you is the story of ralph a viking adventure and this is a book that i can't remember if i read this aloud or my son read it on his own because it's been that long since we did this <laughs> And I do remember liking this book, but I honestly, I can't tell you much more about it. Usually I'll put a little post-it sticky on the books that my children are going to read either on their own or uh, they're ones that I'm going to read to them, like how many chapters we're going to read a day or um, like how long the book is going to take. And sometimes I'll write some notes for myself at the on the back of the book when we're done reading the book, specifically for a situation like this so that I could tell you about it. Or if we're going to revisit this book the next time we do a unit, I will know whether it was something that's worthwhile to include again or it's something that's kind of more optional. Okay, I've got two uh, games to share with you. They're not exactly, uh, they're definitely not historical and they're not, well, actually, maybe one of them is. This one's called Viking Brainstorm and it's by Smart Games. And it's kind of cool because it has Viking ships, but it's not really Viking, um, you know, it's, it's not, it's, it's, it's not historical, right? So it's, it's a fun kind of, uh, it's a fun game to play in the sense that you it's a logic game. You're trying to figure out how to get your boats from one side to another. So it's kind of a neat kind of maze type of game. This one is not Scandinavian or Viking. It's Irish or it's, it's called the Ir um, Ireland's Royal Board Game. And the reason why I included it is because the motif re resembles to for me, it resembles some of the Nordic pa patterns that we would include in our main lesson. And because we haven't had any other unit to place this game, I went ahead and I, I included it here, even though it is not um, part of the unit. It might be historical, but it's, it's not part of the unit in the sense that it's not Viking. <laughs> but I am, I am including it here um, because it's it is one one game that hasn't really found its spot otherwise we do have one project that we did for this uh for this unit um it is in my homeschool room at the moment so i and it's too high for me to reach but it is a a solar powered viking ship that you can assemble it's a really great kit it might be hard to find, but you can find the links for these books and any other project that we're doing uh, in pictures of our, our chalkboard that we did for this unit on the on my website to, with the blog post that accompanies this video. And you can find that link down in the description box below. And you, uh, I'll, I'll share the link for the little Viking ship. Hopefully it's available somewhere or something similar because it was a really, really great hands-on project. It included this a little bit of the science regarding the solar powered and it was a great hands-on project my boys really enjoy those kinds of things and then it was viking inspired because it was a little viking ship so overall it was a really nice addition for this unit we do uh have our main lesson books i'll show you an empty one just so that you have an idea of the main lesson books that we we like to use we have them in all different sizes, landscape and portrait, but this has been my go-to most recently. These ones are available at a child stream. They're nine inches by 12 inches. The covers are nice and thick. The pages are blank and white, and there is onion skin between each of these pages. And I like blank pages, but my kids, even um, 
well for all ages they never like blank pages for writing there is some wisdom in having blank pages for writing especially with the younger children it helps them to orient the it's reflective of them orienting themselves within a school or a family or a classroom is when they're orienting the letters and the words upon a page and seeing how to make them fit and there is that there is that mimicking of working on making your words fit onto the page and also where you fit within the classroom and i i really like that uh, i guess symmetry or that um that experience but my kids um not so much so they are always writing in lines when the kids get older a lot of the main lesson books will have line pages and eventually they'll have more line pages than blank pages so what there are, there are so many to choose from the uh you know, if you prefer to have line pages, they have them as well. Um, I do prefer, this is kind of silly and this is just my own thing. I like blue for our history units. I like yellow for our math units. I like um, orange for our science units, um, like physics and chemistry, green for um, botany, and um, we use... Uh, purple for language arts and I think we use red as well possibly for language arts and maybe for history but um I prefer blue for history so I th it's kind of, this is totally personal but when I think of history I think of like sitting down I think of um like the winter time when we're doing a lot more reading and so I, blue just kind of suits me for that in my mind for that time period if all of the kids all of my kids are, are doing the same colors year by year by year then when i'm looking back at all their main lesson books it's really easy for me to find the ones that were math or science or 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 history um, but that's not always the case I, as i was looking for some of our old um, main lesson books i found that uh, sometimes i didn't always follow that rule uh, i like uh, some of the more active colors for for math and science because I think of those subjects as being a little bit more active and then green for botany that's just because of the color of you know nature so uh, this is I'm, I'm going to briefly show you an example of my children's main lesson books there will be writing and drawing and um, usually for each of the lessons and uh, this one also had this was the chalk drawing that we did and then he's missing a cover page but he's much too old to come back and do that now <laughs> okay so i think that's everything uh, i hope that you enjoyed this video if you have recommendations for our books please you can offer them in the comment section below if you'd like uh, if you uh, would like to see all of these books and whatever projects we did for this unit, you can find all of that on the blog post that accompanies this video. You can find that link down in the description box below. If you'd like to see how we're homeschooling on a daily basis, you can find me on Instagram at Pepper and Pine. And now you can find me on TikTok.